Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to overcome your emotions in trading. Now, this automatically assumes that you have a profitable trading edge. If you don't have that, then this will not matter whatsoever. So I'll link the video up in the cards that you can check out in building a profitable edge. But assuming you have a profitable edge, we're going to dive right into this video. If you're new here, I am a futures trader. Uh, it's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. I've been trading for almost four years now, and it's taken lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of pain over time, but I became more consistent. And I believe that you will as well if you're not already. So let's dive into how to overcome your own emotions when trading. If you feel like you're someone that gets in a trade and you know as soon as you get into drawdown, you're tempted to close the trade early instead of hitting your stop loss. Or as soon as it goes, the trade goes into profit, you're tempted to just close the trade and take the profit early before hitting your TP. If you're someone that does those things or even just the longer you're in a trade, the more you want to close the trade, these are all your emotions getting in the way of letting the trade play out. And if you have the edge already, then you know and we both know that you just have to let the trade play out to hit either the stop loss or the take profit or follow your system that you have it set in place. But we have those emotions for a few reasons. So the first reason is to do with sizing. So you're going to overcome your emotions if your size is very small. Here's a clear example. Let's say you're trading a prop firm account. You're trading a 50K account on Apex and your trailing drawdown is $2,500. If you are trading with any size where your stop loss is more than $500, more than 1% of the account, yeah, those emotions are going to get in the way. Why? Because if you just take four losses in a row, then you've lost the account. And that can happen with most people's profitable trading strategies. So, you know, you could lo lose the account just by having that kind of size. So the first step would be, you know, making sure that let's you figure it out your risk reward ratio and your win rate. Let's say as an example, your win rate is 70% and you're trading, you know, a one R system then, you know, you can fully take three losses in a row, even four losses in a row, possibly, but three or four losses in a row, you can definitely take. So what you want to do is adjust your size accordingly. So that way you're not near that, right? So you want to adjust your size so that way you can take six losses in a row, or you can take seven losses in a row. And once you have that, then you won't have that same fear because you'll let it play out knowing that, Hey, you know, I have room, right? If I take these few losses, there's no reason for me to get worried. Um, so that'll number one, put your emotions at ease. The second thing with this is to go over to the risk of ruin calculator. So you just go to Google type in risk of ruin calculator. I've posted this in other videos and there you can put in your win rate, your risk or reward ratio, how much percent drawdown you're allowed to take on the account, whether it's your personal or it's your funded account. And then it's going to show you the probability of when you could blow that account after so many trades, like what's the highest amount of <clears throat> losses you could take if you use that specific sizing that you're currently using. So once you do those two things, um, that, that's all to do with sizing, right? So you master your emotions. That's all just based on sizing. So after you've done that, the next step is to figure out, okay, if I'm still having these feelings, right, you might not have confidence in your trading system, meaning you might not have enough data on uh, back tested, right? And this happened to me plenty of times. If I don't have enough data, then I still doubt my, my edge. And if you have any doubt in your edge, you will close the trade early, right? You know, in this, again, this comes down to not having enough data, right? If you have more than enough data, if six months, 12 months, two years, if you have that kind of data, you'll have way more confidence than if you just have two months of data, right? Because there could be a, any two month period that goes very well. And then you could have one month that goes very bad and you could take, take like eight losses in a row with the system. It, there's lots of strategies that work very good for one month, very good for two months, but a strategy that works very good for six to 12 months, those are far more rare. So I've noticed as a general rule of thumb, before I put my edge into play and have confidence with size, right? Like I can put my edge into play with very small size uh, early on, but I start to put it in with, with good size when I have at least six months of data, right? Six to 12 months, is that sweet spot. Um, if you have six to 12 months, proving your edge is profitable and you know with that six to 12 months of data, what's the you know largest drawdown you've had in those six to 12 months, then you can go ahead and take those trades and execute with way more confidence because you know what's the worst case scenario based on those you know six to 12 months, as opposed to the worst case scenario of two months, you still have doubt in the back of your head because you think like, oh, what if that was just a good, a good stint we had there and now the system may be you know, getting flawed, and then you could veer from your trading plan, right? 
So those are, those are the two most important. And then the third thing, which is also very important, is just your psychology, right? So, you know, have you been getting enough sleep, right? Have you been managing stress with meditation, right? Are you meditating or doing some sort of breath work before the training day? This has been a game changer for me personally. If I don't meditate or do breath work, breath work before the training session, I'm not allowed to trade. That's in my trading plan. So I actually do a 50 minute meditation, a guided meditation, and I also do uh, about six, seven minutes of breath work. Two things, that's like 20, 22 minutes, 23 minutes of just kind of like breathing and meditation that I'm doing before the market even opens. And that's mandatory or else I'm not allowed to place a trade as a lot, along with other things, right? This is all my trading plan. So, you, you know, dealing with stress, with, with these, dealing with these psychological issues is the third step, right? What are those things that are gonna help you get in the best mind state? What's gonna help you get in the best mind state where you can just execute and not have that hesitation? You wanna do those things before the market opens, be all planned and prepared, instead of just rolling out of bed, coming on the charts, you're not even hydrated, right? That's another thing, I have to have my electrolytes. I have electrolytes and coffee. I have to have one liter of water. All these things, I actually also have to shower before. I do all of these things before I even open up my brokerage or do any of these things, otherwise I'm allowed to trade. And why do I do this? Because I wanna make sure I'm in the 100% peak mental state before I do any trades. So those three, if you do those three things, you will master your emotions over time. Uh, the fourth bonus thing is, is journaling, right? This is mandatory, but this is gonna help you master your emotions sooner because if you journal at the end of every single trading day, which I do, or even right after you're done trading, like let's say if you just trade in the first two hours of the day, if you start journaling after those two hours, like, hey, you know, I took this trade, here I was, this is, here's what I was feeling, here's what I was seeing, here's what happened, and here's how I feel now. If you just journal these things over time, you're gonna understand yourself better. When you understand yourself better, you're better to you're able to make these fine details and tweaks to go ahead and improve your trading plan, improve your approach to the markets. So that's what you wanna to do to master your emotions in trading. This is gonna help you become a consistently profitable trader far faster than you could ever imagine. Instead of it taking three years, it could take one year, right? If you follow along these processes. That's gonna conclude this video. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciated it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I appreciate all of your support along the journey. It's been great. Um, so keep it up. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.